Uh, it's we been incredibly <laughs> distracting. Oh, this is the perfect scene. timing. Oh, Look at him. So good. Good. He's such a chat. <laughs> I have never. I did not see this idol <laughs> yeah. before. This I is saw new. it today. And I was oh like, what? Is, this is legal? It yeah. Never no, it's incredible. Really yeah. close you. The pass is he gets a um, crit chance on weapons based on the amount of shields he has. So, if you put a whole bunch of all the shield mods and you get over shields, which works with his tree, which is as you're killing, you start getting shields and getting over shields. That increases the crit chance with weapons. Uh, the effect is doubled for spear gun weapons, mm -hmm. which I guess I also have to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we started with this one. What would you put on Spear Boy for his one? Throwing spears. I mean, what else are you going to do? So you saw that throwing spear there. Uh, if you hit an enemy and then the enemy hits a wall, which happens a lot because there's walls all over the place and you hit them really hard, it creates a little vortex and whoops. As, as Megan, Megan, we recorded Megan for the sound effect. <laughs> that is exactly the sound effect that we put there. Make it look good. Ooh! Whoa. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> so, god! <laughs> yeah, so with the vortex, it's, it's fairly long range vortex, so you can, if you, if you do land it, and what she's doing right now is, is not necessary, but it's my instinct whenever I'm playing, which is jump and spear them down, because you want them to hit a wall. So if you jump and spear them down, that vortex happens near you, so you can uh, control quite a bit with that. So his number two uh, slams them with a shield. Maybe so low level that they might just Oh, die. there you go. Yeah. So it does damage. So at this low level, it kills them. But if we find a heavy gunner later, you'll see it cuts um, armor in half, and it cuts shields in half, and then does damage. So it's like a, a stagger, which uh, staggers them for like five, six seconds, six seconds. So it's like a micro CC. And do I talk about armor shredding now? Yes, you do. OK. So. When I was doing this one, I started kind of looking at, um, at how armor shredding works on different abilities and noticed that it was pretty inconsistent. So essentially, in some, in some Warframes, when we do armor shredding by like 50%, essentially what we do is, first we go from 100 to a 50, and then if we take another 50, we just take 25, because it's a 50% of the 50%, and then you take another 50, and now we only took 12.5, and seven, and you just kind of go down, 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 and it takes like seven hits to fully remove armor. And that's how most armor shredding works. In fact, there's only one that's different, and that's Oberon. So Oberon, the way it works with him is if he does two strips of 50, he actually takes off 100%. So I didn't like that it was inconsistent, so we actually changed them all, instead of to the way that most do it, we changed them to the Oberon way. So now all armor stripping abilities are more efficient, well, are, are more effective. So essentially, if you hit twice with a 50%, you'll strip 100% on all armor stripping abilities that are uh, percent-based. Uh, I mentioned percent-based because, for example, Mag is not percent-based. She's like a fixed amount, so that one didn't change. It's only the percent ones that are changed. And we changed it for a whole bunch of them. Uh, I don't have a list with me, but uh, it's a bunch. Uh, on top of that, we also did a few revisions to numbers on a few of them. So, for example, I want to do this from memory. So, sorry if I don't if I don't bring them all. But uh, terrify, I think we went from like 30 percent uh, to 75 percent. Uh, Oberon, we went from 30 percent to 50 percent strip. We increased a few, uh, not a ton, but like four or five. I think we increased, and we also changed a few from being duration based to being permanent. So uh, the one I remember right now for that, I think, is Banshee with the Augment. The Sonic Fracture Augment? Yeah, I yeah. think Banshee with the Sonic Fragment Augment used to be duration-based. Now it's permanent. So once you hit them, uh, they don't have the armor, and they stay without the armor. Third ability, here we go. Third ability, here we go. So this is a buff, and it's uh, basically it's called a Rally. Or, well, actually, I don't even remember what it ends up being called. Rally Point. Rally Point, there you go. Um, so basically what it does is uh, buffs nearby allies and yourself to get uh, passive energy regen. And every time you get an assist on a kill, you gain shields. And that, yes, I'm going to do his ultimate before the level ends. So. Okay. Uh, on one guy, though, so prepare yourself. On one guy, okay. <laughs> ultimate on one guy! Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. Uh, so <laughs> if, you saw, <laughs> if you saw the moment from the end of the, uh, the animation where he jumps up and then just summons like uh, energy spears and starts throwing them at the thing. That's basically the ultimate. Uh, and basically it does, yeah, it does a whole bunch of damage, does slash proc, so it's kind of, it's pretty beastly again, and it scales pretty well. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, let's take a look at what actually Veilbreaker actually is at the top level. Mm -hmm. So it is our 32nd major update. So it's update 32. Uh, it's going to have a small quest that introduces you to the future of veil breaking. So if you've played the new war, you kind of can get the idea of where did the world state leave off after everything that happened in the new war. And Veilbreaker is the update that speaks to that, introduces new systems uh, and things for you to play that speak to what state things might be in. So we're not going to give any spoilers, but I want to make sure that players have a pretty good understanding of all the expectations for this update. So there's a quest that's going to kick things off, um, and then it's going to lead into the two systems we're adding to the game for content, which we'll talk about. Uh, then, of course, all of this is behind the new war. So if you haven't finished the new war yet, get on in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a lot of improvements to getting there from a new player perspective. We have even more coming in this update with junction improvements just yep. to make that flow easier. Uh, but it does bring back a character from the new war. It brings a way for this new character, which, spoiler, it's Call, uh, is going to interact <laughs> with the world. Who could it be? <laughs> How Call interacts with the world. Uh, and it's going to bring it down in a weekly activity way so players can sort of know what to expect when it comes to what they're going to be doing with the content here. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that content is around Call, and a lot of it is around something called the Archons, which if you've played the new war, you'll see. We're not going to show it for spoilers, but you'll get a really good idea if you are on the tip of the beer for oh. yeah uh, so that's sort of the overview and then with all the new comes quality of life so mm -hmm. we also have i think there's a second slide here um that tells you that yes of course steinax is coming also new 50th warframe quality of life um and balance new void shell new cosmetics of course uh there's yeah so first syndicate stuff uh since the dawn of time uh, man has yearned to pledge <laughs> to syndicates. <laughs> We've actually done this several times. Yeah. Like, this is a bit of our Groundhog Day, is like separating Come aesthetics me, from. Aesthetics from functionality. Yeah. I, think, I don't know how many times we've done this, but it, we keep doing I think I had it in my GDC talk, but <laughs> yeah. if you don't know, if you love a syndicate, you put on a sigil and you say to yourself, do I want to support, you know, Steel Meridian because I'm based and awesome, or do I want to support Red Veil because I like to kill people? Uh, but what you'll notice is that the sigils, as you can see, no longer have any percent associated with them, mm -hmm. which means they're purely cosmetic. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah, so essentially, I mean, it, it, I see chat already spamming. Essentially, we split that, so you no longer, now the sigils are just for who do you want to represent, what does look cool with your fashion frame, uh, and it no longer has any tie to the gameplay of earning the points. Uh, now, for that, when, when you just get to the system or when you want to switch, you go to the Syndicate's console, and there it is. Pledge allegiance to a syndicate to increase your standing with that syndicate and its allies and earn rewards. You lose standing with syndicates that oppose your pledged ideals, but can rescind your pledge at any time. So for me- You've done voiceover work before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some would say. So say I want to switch it up and be a part of the parent sequence. I click pledge. I am now pledged. The he hates me. Parent You're right up. Yeah, he, he hates me. But now he likes me, so I'm happy. Um, but then at any time I can rescind it if I want to swap. So yeah, you can just swap around syndicate hop, you know? So in Excalibur, the main focus was his one. Uh, basically, we added, um, uh, if I remember correctly, we added slash procs to mm -hmm. every swing. It's much faster. It feels snappier. There, there was some touch-ups to the FX to make it look a little more, more oomphy, uh, more satisfying when you're doing the, the attacks. Um, for his two, I don't think we changed anything in particular. Uh, for his three, we did add a slash proc to the hit. We removed the enemy cap. I guess the enemy cap isn't really for new players, but anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I think for his fourth, we didn't change anything. No. Uh, in general, what we did do, and this, is, this applies to all three, uh, a few of the stats for the abilities. Yeah, if you guys remember the change we did for Arcanes, where they had like four different stats, and they all scaled every rank. We changed Arcanes to now have only one stat that ranks every rank, and everything else is pushed to the max. We did that with a few of the abilities here. And the, the, the overall objective of that is that if you have a lot of abilities that scale every rank, then the improvements become exponential. Uh, whereas if you just have uh, one, it's linear, right? So basically, we wanted to make it, you're raising the floor, but keeping the ceiling the same. That's kind of what we're doing. So we did that with this ones, again, in the, for the intent of it being and feeling better when you're so just So does that starting. mean I can put slash dash back on my Excalibur? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> should I consider doing that? <laughs> you should definitely consider it. It, <laughs> it definitely can. Uh, it does pack a punch. Um, then for Mag, uh, big changes on, on her, her pool. 
Uh, generally, you would pull enemies, and they would just end up way behind you, and you'd have no way to shoot them. It'd be kind of uncomfortable often. So now when you pull, they pull in front of you. Uh, we made a little vortex in front of you, so you kind of just gather them up and smash them. Uh, it is honestly maybe a little too powerful, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it is really fun. It feels much better to use. You can gather enemies and just kind of, if you're using melee, you can just slam them right there. Um, if you're using um, the second ability, it also is very good because you basically gather them on the, on the bubble. So it definitely, it definitely feels pretty good. Uh, one thing we did change here is because it's so much, power, so much more powerful now, the helmet version was reduced. Yeah, pull pulls things no longer behind you in range where you can actually yeah. go go to town on them. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, it is pretty effective because he literally just <laughs> leaves them right there for you, <laughs> served in a platter for you to destroy. I love things on a platter. <laughs> yeah. So her tree always created those little shards. A lot of players didn't even know this was a thing because they are kind of hard to see and they're you know they they never were a big deal. So you see those little lights over there. Now when you pull them, you can see they hover around you. Uh, if enemies get close to you, they deal damage to them. Uh, and then also, if you then cast the magnetized bubble, those little things will fly into the magnetized bubble to, to basically buff it up as, uh, as you guys oh, are, oh. are used to, right? So you can see them uh, spinning there and dealing damage. Well, uh, And finally, Bolt. Bolt is the one that re received the least amount of changes because he was pretty solid already. Uh, a lot of what I mentioned earlier, you know, buffing those those base stats to to max rank. Uh, his one is now 15 energy instead of 25. That's something we're trying. Just like, how does it like? We generally ability first abilities have always been 25, kind of universally. We're trying it on this one, see how it feels to have a, a 15 energy version of it. Um, for his uh, shield, the, most of the changes are to the carry version. Uh, it no longer. Uh, yeah, for the carry. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, tell me. Hey, I didn't know I had my, I had my alternate version, so that's exciting. <laughs> it no longer adds uh, extra energy drain. It no longer slows you down. It no longer limits you to secondary. Mm -hmm. So all of those extra limitations are gone. Uh, so yeah. it's uh, much more comfortable to use. Well, it's actually much more viable to use because a lot of people were not using it as, as it was. Mm -hmm. One change I forgot about Bolt, and oh I just saw God. chat. Senile. <laughs> <laughs> One more I just thing. saw someone in chat mention it. Uh, I did, uh, the speed buff is actually higher now a little bit. I don't remember the number. What? You're increasing Volt's speed buff? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we're slightly increasing the, sp the duration. Not a lot. I know uh, because the change, the comment I was seeing in chat is like, hey, well, increase the duration. I, I don't like the, uh, in general, uh, I think it feels better when a buff is not like something that you just have all the time because then you don't even really like feel when the speed comes in. So it, it's higher, it's constant for all ranks. So rank, rank zero will have the same duration as max rank. They're all raised to the ceiling. It's a little higher, but not a lot higher but the speed itself is high. I'm just going to jump in, and I saw someone in chat asking about the gilding changes. That's just a conversation. So essentially, as we're looking through, like I said, the new war is a you know prerequisite to play the Veilbreaker stuff, getting people to new war in a way that is streamlined and interesting and fun with all the content we have. Uh, gilding changes speak to that. So essentially, the gilding system as it is now, it takes your modular gear, um, and it you know, you can guild it to not only increase their stats, but also to start earning mastery from it and other things. But what we've done with guilding now is as a functionality for modular gear, it is now the gate to mastery. So that means that your modular stuff from your Zaws to your uh, kit guns are going to give gilded level stats when you build it. And then you can choose to guild it if you want to earn mastery. So Right. right, so with ribbons, if you come to the game, my gameplay, I'm just going to kind of recap how they currently work. Uh, you never know someone's experience level in chat. But essentially, you have ribbon slots, and those ribbon slots are occupied by any ribbon you get in the game. So Ribbon capacity. Yeah, so your ribbon capacity, mine right now is uh, 117. I'm almost at capacity, and every ribbon I get is going to feed into that. But we are changing that. So basically, there's those two stats. Now we have a new kind of state for the ribbon, where essentially you're going to get your ribbon, and it is going to stack, and it is going to be basically a secret. You're going to obviously know what weapon to put it on so that you can equip it. As you can see, it kind of goes by a little fast. But as soon as you equip that ribbon, 
onto that weapon. It unveils it, you can see what the actual challenge is, and then it counts towards your ribbon capacity. So you can just keep earning ribbons and not equipping it and knowing what it's for, and it doesn't stack towards that uh, capacity you have. Yeah, it's like a pre-capacity bucket so yeah. that sometimes we've always struggled with you can't do a sortie because your ribbon capacity is mm -hmm. full, and that's just sort of a bit of a, not a pleasant flow for the player, so this solves that. Wukong. Oh, Wukong. I'm actually going to talk about AoE and put go Wukong somewhere in there. Go for it. Okay. Let's jump right into AoE, Pablo. Let's okay, do it. So we're going to go directly into AoE, uh, and that's why I brought this page. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how complicated that one is. So the rest of us can just sit back, relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think our job is to react to Pablo. <laughs> yes, this is like a, yeah, we want to get the thumbnails on the react streams. Where it's like, I can't believe DE did this. <laughs> <laughs> or like, what are they doing? Um, so AoE. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So anyway, here we you go. You guys can stop. Over to him. There yeah. we go. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, as you guys know, AOE has been uh, pretty dominant for for a little while. Mm -hmm. We have video. footage of how yeah. we play live, right now. Live, for the live build. <laughs> no, we live. have AOE footage. Yeah, this is live build footage of how, I think there's um, a few, this is showing the fact that there's no consequence to using it. Well, there's a few things being shown here. Yeah. Essentially, you can run through a mission like this, kind of shooting a a rocket at your feet, murdering everything in a long, long range. Uh, you never run out of ammo. You never suffer much damage. I wouldn't say it's automated, but I would give it a half a point for automated. A, we can take a look at full automation with the second AOE video. Uh, yeah, the second AOE is a little more. Uh, yeah, so there's this one. Uh, this one, basically, uh, we had one of the testers try this, and he stayed there several minutes, never ran out of energy, never ran out of ammo, never died like he could even collect enough uh, survival um, thingy from just standing there doing essentially nothing just shooting at the floor you don't even have to see the enemies the we feel like this this style of gameplay has become pretty it's pretty bad like you know you're uh, you you're know not it's not a game. yeah you're not playing yeah. A game. yeah um so the second one is dominance and we've done this before for example with catch moon when uh weapons become so overwhelmingly uh, dominant that you basically have almost no choice but to use them. If you use anything else, you almost feel like you're playing wrong, because what's going to compete with what you're seeing on screen, right? Like it's just mm. you're just devastating entire rooms without having to aim, without a care in the world. It's very hard to have anything else that can compete with something like that. So right now, out of our top five weapons, uh, all five are AOE. They comprise 47% uh, of our weapon usage. It's essentially kind of all there is. Yep. Uh, so use AOE or you're playing wrong as yeah. a trend. So uh, yes, yeah. so you can come back to us now, Dimas. I'm sure, sure people are not getting any entertainment. <laughs> Do you get it yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. But like that's just the look at it. That's the extreme <laughs> use case. That's when. Like that particular use case is when you are automating and playing. People do play and engage with Warframe with AOE right. weapons. We're not painting everyone with the same brush. We're just showing the extremes that we see when we get these mm -hmm. reports. And, and actually, the last point, so A, yeah. if you're not doing that, you're playing wrong. And the final one, which is for our co-op game the most important, are you disrupting other players? Yeah, and that, that comes down to like how disruptive is your gameplay to other players that might join you. Because at the end of the day, this is a co-op game. Uh, we need to... like. We need to try and keep uh, the, the game fun for everyone and so make it so that one player cannot kind of quote unquote ruin it for the rest. Uh, those are our whys. Now, what are we doing? Uh, the, we try to approach this in a kind of holistic way. Uh, let me start with ammo. I'll start with what we were changing for ammo and then at the end I'll mention why it matters for AoE. So in ammo, we have four different types of ammo that drop regularly in the game. We have five if you count heavy ammo, but I won't. Uh, so those four types. Basically, it'll be secondary, primary, shotgun, and sniper. Uh, and then, basically, those drop in the floor. They have different, uh, different colors, and then you pick them up. We were trying to simplify it, and we are changing it into primary and secondary only. No more separation for shotgun or for uh, sniper. What does that mean for you if you came with your, with your shotgun to a mission? It means that now when you kill an enemy, instead of having uh, one out of four chance of getting ammo that actually helps you, you now get one out of two, so that basically now ammo is a little more plentiful for mm. you. On top of that, we actually increase how much ammo you get from each uh, bucket because we reduced how often they drop. So we, they're now twice as useful. We reduce how often they drop by half, so now we're even, 
and then we increased how much ammo they give, so now it's above. Because we're talking about ammo, I don't know where, if you're going to go into the holster speed stuff from here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so because <laughs> there is a, but then depending on your builds or how you manage your gameplay, there is a likelihood you'll be holstering and weapon swapping more, which means we're actually going to buff that. Uh, right. This is a long standing change, and we have a video uh, kind of showing it. Essentially, we're changing holstering. Uh, you can see there on the right, we have the new one. On the left, we have the old one. And essentially, we remove the first animation where you go and holster in. And then we uh, sped up the second animation where you holster out. So now switching between weapons is considerably faster. So uh, it actually enables you a little bit more to bring a workhorse uh, weapon as your secondary that you can use to kill around. And then on your primary, you can keep your uh, AOE nuke. So you nuke a few times, you start running low on ammo, you switch to your secondary, you kill a few enemies, gather ammo, and then switch back, and then you can do that, that back and forth. Um, which, uh, it really is kind of like, that is the reason there is a secondary, right? Like, mm. the whole point of the secondary was so that you could, like, accomplish separate things. Uh, all the mods that had um, holster speed, some of them we just removed. So, for example, in, in Big Girl Swap, we, we just left the, the damage buff untouched, and we just removed the holster speed part because it makes no sense now. Uh, we do have some mods that are just holster speed that we changed to now. If I, I, I'm not going to improvise what they are right now, no. but we changed them. Uh, they still exist, and they do something related to holster, which my memory does not allow me to recall right now. That's okay. The next thing is headshots. Yep. And from the test that we did internally, um, Basically, you, it was a difference between like 4 and 10% damage. So it's not a huge nerf to AOE weapons, but basically AOE weapons can no longer deal headshots, the explosion part. If you hit uh, someone with the Brahma, with the arrow on the head, that will do a headshot, but the explosion itself won't do headshots. The other, the other kind of side of like, okay, well, if AOE is too strong, then maybe we need to lift the, the things that are not AOE. Basically, for any sort of precision weapons, we increase the headshot multiplier to three times multiplier. So now if you land a headshot with an actual weapon, you actually do more damage. So that way you can bring your Rubico, which actually is pretty <laughs> highly used, uh, and then if you deal a headshot with it, now it's a triple, triple the damage. So basically you have um, more incentive to use precision weapons there. And then the mods. Yes. Historically, whenever we've done uh, prime mods, we generally uh, increase the, the stats by about two, two times. So not as much as two, but about that. On this one, some Prime Firestorm and, uh, and the Fulmination, mm -hmm. we went triple the bonus, uh, which was kind of crazy uh, in retrospect. Uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, it was, it was um, unusual and it was also a mistake. So those two are, are changing to be more in line. And switch to uh, Steel Path. Uh, th we're adding Void Fisher Steel Path missions, so you can actually do your Lith Relics at a higher difficulty, uh, so, and you'll also get Steel Essence for it and the usual Steel Path things. Should he, Celestial Twin is meant to be your second in command. He does a lot of damage. This is okay, but we're making changes. Yeah, so the, we're mostly focusing on that first ability, uh, which, as you can see here, is pretty powerful. Uh, the main change... Uh, so, First of all, we're having this damage. So right now he copies exactly the damage that you would do, which in retrospect, it's, it, it's always been too high. So we cut in half, but we also increase the damage if you mark a target. Which some people might not even know you could do, because why yeah. bother? But <laughs> you can mark true. targets with Wukong's uh, uh, Celestial Twin. Uh, the other change we did is that he now actually uses your ammo. So, and the last change is that he now actually is affected by by the explosion, so he now will get staggered, he will mm -hmm. get all that. Now, in practice, most players that, uh, that have Wukong will also come with Prime Sure Footed, so... That, that yeah, he inherits your loadout in yeah. that respect. So. His fourth uh, is getting a buff, essentially he's getting a little more base damage on it. We're not fully restoring, but adding a little bit of the range growth with the combo. Uh, it's not as huge as it was before, but it still uh, gives you, I think, up to like 3.5 meters, something like that, so more than a prime stretch. Uh, and we're also adding at the end of his uh, forward combo, uh, where he does like a stomp on the floor, 
uh, he'll do a little vortex to pull enemies to you. We will be adding some more Void Shell skins with uh, the update. We're going to have Nova, Excalibur, Wukong, hilariously. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you're not too upset by the changes, you maybe know, slap a skin it. on him. Yeah. There you go. And then Styanax as well. So that's four coming in this update. Uh, and we are adding uh, a new ephemera as well. So we'll have the Fog of War ephemera. So this mm. will be um, one, which, again, it hides the saturation, so maybe you, you approve of this part. Sure. I've got Fertia Deluxe, the Cathedrus, Cathedrus, Cathedrus. That's the jo host's job. Don't I'm just wondering about how you pronounce it. None of my business. I pronounce <laughs> it. Uh, the <laughs> Deluxe Collection, Caledrius, Caledrius. Uh, this is coming with Veilbreaker. She also has, I believe, a throwing, throwing bombs, mm -hmm. throwing mm -hmm. bomb skin, yep. and the top four skin as well. A penchant to do amazing art um, actually came up with the Protea mm, Deluxe skin wow. and we worked with them like this concept and now it's time to push things forward with Veilbreaker. And after you finish the Veilbreaker quest, a couple things are going to change for you. Uh, first is you may have a new visitor. Um, if you decorated your drifters area, you might need to move some stuff around. This, this is going to lead to um, the kickoff of the new systems we're adding. So the first system pertains specifically to this character you see here. Uh, you may know him as Call, and he's going to have, uh, he has a purpose, and he has a goal after the new war and everything that happens. So you'll be experiencing a once a week narrative from his perspective of what he wants to do and you'll be sort of cycling through that once a week there will be something for you to play we're going to rotate through i think we're starting with three um so three weeks you'll be going through and every time you play one perhaps he's going to gain a following or his mission is going to you know push further so this area that you see here will grow you'll meet some people you may wonder who chipper is this is a never before seen person that might have aligned goals and call is here, call is waiting, and of course, like any, you know, any fun uh, system we have. Near army, call only get one uniform. <laughs> yeah, call is here <laughs> to, uh, you know, you can, you can do some things to make your call look the way he would. Uh, and then you can go out and play your, your call uh, weekly. Make a small clip of a dev build um, gameplay just to give people a look into what call might be going through. So this is dev build uh, whips, but call has found himself somewhere that you might recognize. He managed to get a jetpack and he must free his, uh, his brother here. So this um, whole uh, fiction and everywhere you're gonna go with Call is going to involve um, what is he gonna do against the sentience? And what can he as one Grenier alone do? Well, as he rescues his brothers, he'll find that he has the power to you know, command them and get them to do different things. Carry your art sensibilities are gonna tingle because I'm actually showing something placeholder here. But there's secrets and little things that you're going to want to uncover to push that call weekly mission forward so you can earn things to shop in, you know, maybe this new character back over here on the gameplay side. Um, this uh, character on my screen here, Dean, uh, might have some things for you to grab uh, week over week, uh, depending on how far you advance. Every time you do a call weekly, you'll push the call garrison forward. And this is where Styanax will be for the free path once we're done with his campaign. And once we're done, um, you know, you, you, you know, don't get it for free for those two weeks anymore, Styanax will be here. We'll have cosmetics for call in here. And we're gonna have a couple other things that we're gonna talk about. Once you've got the quest complete, which is a shorter quest for uh, Veilbreaker, you're gonna unlock something called Archon Hunts. And these are a weekly system uh, for players that every week uh, you're gonna get the intel on a new Archon that has a new, you know, tweaked look for the post-New War world. And there's gonna be new lore and new stakes for you as a player to go through these. Uh, you'll hear from some characters. Maybe I have a voice recording session Monday. <laughs> Who's to say uh, how much is there? And then you're going to uh, do a mission in this section of gameplay content that will always amount to a showdown with an Archon. And these are our version of content that we really want you to think about what loadout you're gonna bring and how you're gonna play it in a co-op setting. So we have some restrictions just to change it up. These are weekly, so if you can't do it the first day, you have all week to try and, you know, refine your build, whatever uh, troubles you're having, maybe you get a squad to help you. Uh, but you'll get bonuses for certain gear, and then there's also restrictions where respawns, you can't self-revive, really co-op reviving is the only way to st stay alive. So if you get down, you better hope you're sticking with your squad so that you can all stay together, advance together through the mission. And then consumables, uh, similar to Steel Path, they have a cooldown. So same idea as Steel Path. These are weekly, uh, and then they end with that fight against the given Archon of the week. Uh, you can absolutely do them solo. Uh, it doesn't have to be co-op, but 
as with all things in our game, totally possible so solo, but it's they are tough. They they are, are, and yeah. they are meant to be tough missions. Yeah. So every week, if you do your uh, Archon hunt, you will earn the corresponding Archon shard, which when you're done the quest, you'll have the necessary uh, equipment to use it, which means that your helmet is getting more use. And Archon shards as a system are an upgrade system for your a given Warframe. Uh, so you can use your Azure shard, or if you're lucky, you have a 20% chance to get a Tau Forged one. Uh, and your Archon shards will be installed in a given Warframe. You have uh, five shard slots, which you can put your shards in. So for me, um, I have my Protea here, who I love dearly. And Pablo, if you want to talk a bit more about this system, uh, feel free. Yeah, essentially it's a way to kind of uh, focus on like the, the, the frames that you really want to buff even more, the ones you want to take to the very extreme. Basically, you can select from three different crystals, and they also they have the, the Tau Forge versions, which are a little stronger. Um, so uh, you can select them, and then from that, it'll give you a selection between different buffs that you can get from those gems. Um, so in this case, you can increase the health of your Protea. You can give them some shield. As you can see, the Tau Forge gives it a little, a little extra bonus, some more uh, energy. Essentially, you can kind of oomph your, um, your preferred frames to get them. Uh, and the, also the, the gems, if you, well, the, the shards, if you decide to, they can, be, um, they can be moved. So you're not like fully committed. You can take them out using um, basically helmet resources. Yeah, and just to be clear, these are permanent stat upgrades that your given Warframe would have. So if I love my Protea and I did my weekly Archon hunts, I can now permanently increase a specific stat depending on which shard I have. So as you fight uh, Amar, you'll get the Crimson shards from Amar, you'll get the Amber shards from Nera, and you'll get the Azure shards from Boreal. And these are permanent stats um, that you can apply to a given Warframe. So yeah, and generally speaking, the, the red one is offensive stuff, uh, or attack Crimson. stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, then the yellow is utility, and then the blue is, well, what you're seeing here, which is more on the defensive, uh, defensive side of things. So you have a limit of five Archon uh, shard slots per frame, um, and you can put them in. So you'll be earning these at the rate of one a week, and you'll be able to kind of decide which frame you really want to invest in. And they, they, well, do they stack? So if I had five blue shards, or uh, Azure shards in this case, I could put five all for armor. Yeah. So spoiling a little bit from the yellow, for example, the yellow you can get um, extra bonus from energy pickups. So if you put five of those, you can almost replace uh, energize with that. So you basically could kind of free up your your um, your arcane slot, um, and basically you can kind of pick and choose which frame you want to go with the ones that are attack based, which ones would you want to go utility, which ones you prefer defense. Um, yeah, removing a star shard doesn't destroy it. So say in the case of a frame that doesn't have a prime, if you've put all these uh, shards in that frame and the prime comes out, you'll be able to get it back. There will be a little bit of friction. Right now it's using a Helminth resource, so that's still under review for what we're going to do there. But we know that um, people who have invested in frames might want to change their mind. So we are going to uh, let you move those around. Yep. Uh, and, and the only other note is... Uh, well, I don't know if I say this, but in Castor, we were all stuck in a... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> there will be shards available. It's not just through the uh, weekly Archon hunts, where you're going to be doing that final boss fight with an Archon to take their shard, but Kyle might have got one or two things up his sleeve, so we're gonna, you can kind of engage with both systems to get yourself those particular upgrades. 